first of all, I wanted to ask questions first. Um, the most important is why do you want to be in business? Like, do anybody can answer that question? Why do you want to be in business for yourself? To have freedom to do what you want when you want to. Okay. I'm going to ask. I want to be in business because I feel like I have ideas to help other people mm -hmm. live better than I own. And what kind of business are you trying to open up? Um, I'm really interested in health and wellness. So I'd really like to open up my own yoga studio. That's awesome. The world needs that. Big time. Here's the deal. When I first started, I had no idea what business meant, to be honest with you. I just didn't want to go to jail or do something crazy because me being dyslexic, I did everything backwards anyway, so I always end up getting caught, so it didn't matter. And my first name is Kellogg. It's Kellogg Kelly Owens. So with a name like Kellogg, I never got away with nothing. <laughs> nothing. So... When I first started, I was working at a, a moving company. I'm a, a furniture company, and um, they were selling furniture. And I was just one of the guys that was on the back of the truck, you know, like uh, just helping the guys load their trucks. Not loading it physically, but telling them what was sold, you know. And then over the period of time, people were coming in, and we only delivered, like, the little small stuff, like the stuff that was, like, uh, that was rented. So shortly after that, I couldn't sell anything because most people, we only delivered furniture that we were renting, not selling. So I went from that point to my own truck. But the key is, is this. Your success is basically yours. I'm going to be honest with you. There is nothing in this world that you can't do. It really isn't. I look at all you guys in here, and I, and I see myself as a reflection. Every time I get up and speak, I learn something at the same time. My main thing is... I want you guys to get from this is always believe that you can do it. Remember two things. Every time the light shines upon you, there's a shadow. Every time the light shines on you, there's a shadow. So you can be a leader and a follower at the same time. You know what I mean? You can lead yourself. And you also can follow. Being in business is not about the money. If you go in business sometimes thinking about, okay, success is about money, then you've lost in the beginning, unless you born into it, you know? But mostly business is more about like, um, like for instance, let me ask you something. What kind of business do you want to be in? Do you know? Any clue? Um, I'm in insurance right now. So insurance? I wanna you want to do your own thing? Yeah. Okay. Do you have people in your family that's into, in the insurance business? Not at all, no. See, that's what I'm talking about. That's a leap of faith. You know what I mean? So if you guys are writing down things, I'm going to give you a couple of things that you can write down. One is faith. Okay? That is a true beginning because when you first get started, I'm telling you, you have to have passion. When I first started business, I thought having a business, you have to have a suit and a tie because that's what business is all about. But it really isn't. For instance, like the chairs you're sitting in, that's somebody who started a business. You know? With that chair being built... That just that chair alone, it created like moving trucks, warehouses, advertising in order for the chair to even get here to where you guys are now. Okay? So listen, when you start your business, don't think about like how much money I made on it. Think about how can I get you to come back. When I first started, I wasn't doing it because of the money. I was doing it because I had nothing else. And finding passion for yourself is when business begins. And at the moment when you think about, when you start worrying about your failures, you got to have a short memory when you're doing business, a very short memory. Because the moment you start thinking about what you failed on, that's the moment you put your destiny on hold. You get that? Any of you guys kind of get that? You put your destiny on hold when you're thinking about the past or what you did, how you failed. But you got to think about every kid that's grown up in this world had to learn how to walk, talk. I mean, you think about coming into this world, your weakest moment is when you can't even talk. Your eyes are processing things every millisecond. Your taste buds are on a roll, runaway roller coaster when you have no idea what taste buds is. And you can't even crawl and someone else has to hold your head up. And you guys here stand right now. Each one of you guys are successful. You're a businessman. You're a businessman. You're a businesswoman. You know why? Because the business that you've taken within yourself You've already succeeded how to walk, talk, dress yourself, and all the above. 
So you already have the tools in you to make it. Go ahead. I found my passion through my failure. Because every time that I failed, I, well, I got angry. And ang anger does not have a place in business. You know, I got angry, but I, I turned that into something positive. And I'm going to tell you, there's many days I wanted to give up. Because I saw, I didn't want to be, a, when I started a moving company, I only did moving because I thought my brother was going to make it into the NFL. <laughs> you know what I mean? He wanted to go to like proms, and I'm thinking, okay, if I do an extra delivery, I can get him some clothes. Then later on, he's going to get me that Bentley I've always wanted. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> and then the same thing that I did with him, I wish I would have done it to myself at the same time. Because here it is, I was building him up, trying to get him to retire me. Then I end up introducing him to his girlfriend, <laughs> you know? And this girlfriend, he was here to visit, and he was going to the combine that same year. And the girl that I lined him up with is the reason why he quit school. <laughs> I'm like, are you kidding me? You know what I mean? Are you kidding me? You're going to walk out of school just like that? So now my moving company became reality. So I had to do something. I'm telling you, if you'd have seen my first moving truck, everyone <laughs> would crack up. I promise you. I had an Acura Legend with a trailer hitch on the back of it. And I had a trailer built. And I was doing moves like Sanford and Son. If anybody knows what Sanford and Son is. I'm telling you, I did it like there was no other. <laughs> Only thing I'm saying is no matter how big or how small you do it, have passion. You know? Business starts when you, let's say when you wake up in the morning. You got it. When you wake up and walk into the bathroom, brush your teeth, wash your face. That is your business plan. You're already in business. Look what you're doing for you. There's love there. So the next thing I want you guys to write out is love. We have believe after that. But we have faith. Faith, you got to have to have faith in something. You don't have faith in anything, you have faith in yourself. Question? How long did it take you to make a profit? Um, I thought my profit was the first day. <laughs> to be honest, until I had to pay somebody. You know what I mean? And I had to take the truck back that I was renting. Because my first move, I did a whole complete move for 100 bucks, like $120, you know? You know I'm think, but I'm thinking on the sales floor, you know, I sell a couple of things, I make 60 bucks, I'm good, you know? Someone offered me 100 bucks, I'm like, yeah. I took the truck back. <laughs> that truck was like $110 at the end of the day. So what that taught me was is now when I'm driving a rental truck, don't be just joyriding, showing the friends because it's costing me money, you know what I mean? Because I'm passing my friends like, yeah, I'm, you know, I'm making it, you know. I'm spending 60 cents per mile, <laughs> all my profit, you know. So it took me about a year to learn what profit meant. Your profit is going to come after you're starting to realize that when you first start making money, it's not about you. It's about this dream that you have inside you, you know? Everybody think they have a purpose. It's like when you try to figure out what your purpose is as far as business, like, listen, your business. Do you know what kind of business you want to be in? Yeah, I like to build homes, residential homes. Awesome. Foundations, all of the above? Yeah, wow. Foundations, foundations. You, right here. What, what, what kind of business would you want to be in? Yeah. I'm a little cross eyed, I promise you. You'll get it. After, I mean, in about 10 minutes, you'll get it. I'm a little cross eyed. So, what kind of business do you want to be in? I'm not speaking to the county. I'm still not sure. Okay, that's good. But you got to believe in something. That's what I'm saying. So, believe. Believe is our next thing. Write down believe. All my trucks, I have believe because there's been many days that I got to wash in my face, not knowing who the man was that I was looking at because I didn't know whether I was going to make it or not. And when she said well, my first profit, that's a good question. Because I promise you, there's a lot of times people go years to not see profit. And when you make money, it's not about buying brand new cars. You know what I mean? Getting that nice pair of shoes that you thought you would have had, you know? My biggest thing was is, like for instance, like this jacket. When I get up in the morning like today, I put on this jacket. I don't want to wear no jacket. I'm not a jacket guy. You know what I mean? But this is the image of business. When I think of business, this is the image that I think of. But I got my Kellogg movie shirt under here, which I'll show you guys later. Because <laughs> that's where I feel comfortable. Like this, dude, this is not, you know? But you got to figure out what's you. Don't care about what someone else's dreams is. Because you got to think about every amazing person in this world 
that has come amazing. Majority of them, not even, no one knows anything about them. Have no clue. Look at your laptop. This per who, do you even know who makes that laptop? Who made it, who, found, who came up with the idea? You know what I mean? The person who came up with that seat, you're in comfort right now, this person's dream, they can't even sleep. Now we're sitting in a chair that they came up with. You understand what I'm saying? You want your passion to, to carry. You know what I mean? Whatever it is you have, you want it to carry. So when I used to have people pay me, I wanted cash and money on it because I didn't want no checks because at that time I had a couple of warrants, you know what I mean, for, <laughs> for driver's license. Not, you know, my driver's license was all point. And so I wanted them to pay me cash. But what, I, what that did is that hurt me because in the long run I thought that I was getting over on the government, but I was also hurting myself because when I went in to get a loan for my company to try to build it, I didn't have any paperwork to prove. I had paper in my pocket, you know what I mean? I'm like, ma'am, I got like money in my pocket. And she's like, that doesn't work, you know? <laughs> Can you show me deposits that you have made? I'm like, I got a nice car sitting outside, and she's like, it still doesn't matter, you know? What have you deposited in the last six months? So then I started depositing my money. And then I started taking checks, even though then I took a risk because the majority of them was balancing anyway, because people, when they're moving, sometimes they're moving for a reason. You know what I mean? So I'm going to tell you that what my biggest key is. I got to remember this. I'm going to tell you what my biggest key is. When you always, when you ever get lost, you know, like sometimes people tell you how to find yourself. Like, how do you find myself? What is my purpose? Okay? Let's say, like for you, and let's say this guy on the corner. Do you two know each other? Okay. But look at this, though. From this moment, you will. You, you understand what I'm saying? That little moment. Then, now, right now, you just made a business deal with this guy. You understand what I'm saying? So now, every time, I'm serious. Every time you come into class, I guarantee you, you guys going to know each other. So, hey, how you doing? You know what I mean? You see what I'm saying? That's your greatest business strategy. You know why? You make that connection to everyone, your people that you know. When you start your business, you're already in business because of you. So here's the little keys to teach you how to do for others. Because sometimes when you're a service to others, you're servicing yourself. Sometimes when you pass by a bubblegum machine. How many of you guys pass by a bub bubblegum machine? Have you ever found a quarter next to a bubblegum machine? Have you ever? What does, it, what does that do to you? OK, see that? Man, I'm telling you, are you kidding me? I, got, I found a, bubble, a key at a bubblegum machine one time. Man, I'm telling you, I didn't know which one I wanted to get. But now, I leave a quarter. Every time I pass by a bubblegum machine, I leave a quarter. Know why? You're going to be successful. Because when you walk to a bubblegum machine and there's no quarters, you keep looking and you pass it by, right? But the kid that finds that quarter is always curious. So if me, you, and five of our buddies, let's say we're out just hanging out, and there's a place that's hiring, and we think they're hiring. And I'm like, ah, uh, nah, they're not hiring. You, because you was curious and went over there and took a chance, you go say, you know what, I'm going to take a chance. And you go in there, let's say they're not hiring. That's okay, because you didn't lose anything. But when you do go in there, they are hiring. That quarter taught you how to not give up. You know what I mean? Just that. You know? So ne next thing I want you guys to write down is never give up. I'm channeled with you because there's something special about you, man. I'm serious. <laughs> serious. I'm, I'm just telling you, never give up. Because sometimes when, it's, when, when everybody said there's a light at the end of the rainbow or there's a light at the end of the tunnel or whatever, you know what the light is? You. It's you. Like, you in the corner. Who got you up this morning? I'm cross-eyed. It's the second one in. So. Yes, ma'am. You got yourself up. What, did, you have, did you have a alarm clock? You did? Okay, if that alarm clock didn't come on, would you still wake up? Probably. Okay. It's business. You know what I mean? Everything is business. Shoes you have on is business. The rhythm of your heart is business. So you have to think about this. What do you love most? If I would add, let's say you right here, if I would ask you, what do you love most? If I would add anything, what is your passion in the blue shirt? Oh, um, yeah, what is your passion? Cars? Cars? Old, old cars? Old school? Old school love. <laughs> Elvis Presley. And on and on and on, right? right. What's your favorite car? Oh, that's, that's hard. I mean, I like uh, Tempest, like 60s okay. Tempest. Um, okay. I like old, like 40s Dodge Power Wagons. That's awesome. Um, let's see, there's uh, 442s, there's GTXs. Yeah. 
Um, yeah, I like judges better than yeah. bosses. Yeah, bosses are good. Okay. But see, see where your passion is about cars? That's what you take into your business. The same passion. You take that passion into your business. And when you start writing down, every time you have a good idea, write it down. Because, you know, the brain sometimes, like when I used to, I come up with great ideas out there, and I never would write it down. And I go to the next customer, and I'm thinking, I knew I was thinking of something. And it's just something simple like laying a pad on the floor. But I didn't write it down. <laughs> you know what I mean? By the time I'm leaving, the lady's like, uh, are you guys going to sweep that floor? I'm like, there it is. Okay. I should have wrote that down. You know what I mean? So passion. Everybody write down passion. What are you passionate about? What are you passionate about? And if you sit still along, it, let's say, for instance, if everybody right here just sits still for a second, just silently. I mean, there's a perfect song going on. You can't even hear it. Can you feel your heartbeat? You know what I'm saying? That's life. You're living. You know what I mean? Every second that we're in here, we're either gaining or losing. You want to gain. The person next to you, get to know them sometimes. That might be your greatest person when you get in business. Old school cars? I'm in old school cars. I want to know you, man, if I need something done. You know what I mean? That's what I'm talking about. You know, they was talking about doing LS engines, and I was like, nah, I want to do something a little bit more. Ugh. You know what I mean? With the carburetor, you know what I mean? The sound of the engine and stuff like that, you know? Ma'am, you back there, I will ask you a question. What is your passion? Yes, ma'am. What is your passion? Yes. Yes. Uh, well, at this point in time, I'd have to say my, watching my sons, my, yes. son, my, my sons. Anybody else in here has kids? Have kids? How old? Oh my gosh, that's life. The greatest lesson. I bet you every one of you took a picture of yourself right now. If every one of you took a picture of yourself as a kid, if you just get a picture, I'm gonna tell you, this give, will give you the chills. If you wanna see someone give you the greatest advice ever, take a picture of you as a kid and look right into the eyes of that picture and say to yourself, are you making that kid proud? I mean, Think about that. We always say, I want to look into the future, okay? You can do that right now by looking in a picture of that child and saying, am I making you proud? Am I doing what you want me to do? Would that kid say, if I grew up, if you put yourself, turn yourself around and say, looking up at you and say, is this what I wanted to be when I got older? And I'm telling you, if you're not happy with that, it's time to do something. You know, you understand what I'm saying? I'm serious. I want every one of you guys write that down. I want a picture of yourself as a kid, okay? A picture of yourself as a kid is going to be better than seeing yourself in a mirror because when you see yourself in a mirror, we always see our imperfections. You know what I mean? How many of you guys got dressed this morning and looked in the mirror? How many of you guys changed what you did by looking in the mirror? You know what I mean? Change your hair, you know, got to fix a little, got to make sure something else is taken care of. What the mirror does is it, it takes away the reality, even though you might think it's reality. It takes away the reality of what is right there in front of you. The mirror doesn't show your heart beating. It doesn't show the blood that's flowing through your veins. It doesn't show your thought process of what kept you up last night. It doesn't show you anything that you're trying to get to stick on your brain so you can pass that test the next day. You know what I'm saying? But I guarantee you, if you take a picture of yourself as a kid, you as a kid, I promise you, you will say, oh my goodness. That kid would teach you something. Because the little things about us, when, Ed, when you were a kid, you fought harder than you ever fought in your entire life. Think about it. Harder than you've ever fought in your entire life from zero to six. So there's nothing that's impossible. Because when you couldn't hold your own spoon, you figured it out. Right? When you couldn't stand, you figured it out, right? When you couldn't stand, what did you do? Crawl, right? If you couldn't crawl, what did you do? You scoot, right? You know what I mean? If you couldn't get it, what did you do? You tiptoe? I'm just saying, I'm just saying the blueprint of business is in you. So just think about when you get to those hard times, think about me as a kid, you as yourself as a kid. Think about little, like wanting something and having a tiptoe to go get it. What about 
if you can't even say what you want, you got to make words like, uh, uh, mm, yeah, uh. My son does that now. And people say, how do you know what he knows? I'm like, because I know. Because I get it. Because I've been there before. The key reason why I say that is if you want something, now that you have a word and you have a voice, say it. Say it. Don't just, don't live your life on text messages. Text messages is the reason why a lot of business and customer service has failed. Because I'm telling you, I used to, I had guys working for me. Customers right there asking them big things, but they lost a good tip because they were text messaging. When we didn't have a phone in our pocket, you did more, you made what count. When you left your house, you made it count. Because when you got home, you, talk, you call the girl back. Hey, how you doing? What are you doing? Hey, just still me. <laughs> but now you can't, that, cu that little cuteness that you have, that's gone now. Now you have to answer. I know you got your phone. <laughs> Hello, what you doing? Nothing. No, where you at? I'm just hanging out with, uh-oh, FaceTime all day. <laughs> I mean, uh, uh, girl, let me call you back. You know what I mean? What I'm saying, it takes the cuteness away. You know what I mean? The phone sometimes takes the cuteness away. I'm just telling you to keep it. Just remind yourself, keep that picture. I mean, put one in your glove box if you can. Because I'm telling you, that child, that's you. You know what I mean? Your mentor is you. Don't never follow the next person. You know, some people say, I wish I could be in his shoes. No, you don't. You know what I mean? If we all were standing in line, let's say, let's say you, you and you, we were all standing in line at the bank, okay? Let's say four of us standing in the bank. I'm first, you're second, you're third, you're fourth. I'm going to tell you how you think business-wise. This is how it's going to change, and you've got to remember this. You're fourth, right? So where are you, okay, where are you in line right now? Third. Third. Where are you in line? Uh, see? You see the hesitation? <laughs> no, but I'm just saying, but I, I, I get your, but where, where are you at in line? Third. Third. Where are you? Fourth. Who's number two? Okay. Okay, so what I'm saying, you see how quick something can be forgotten when I just said it? You guys get that? You know what I mean? So let's say this, in business, this is what I want you guys to always think. Don't ever think that you're last, because you know why? You always first stand in front of the person when someone's behind you. As soon as someone gets behind you, you're first. Put yourself first. Always put yourself first. You understand what I'm saying? Don't look at the line. Because I used, when I went down to get a business license, they had a long line. Guess what I kept doing? I ain't in that line. I mean, I'll come back tomorrow. <laughs> you know what I mean? The next day I go down there, it's the line a little shorter. And before you know it, I start getting a couple of phone calls. I'm thinking, I can get this tomorrow. You know how much business I lost by waiting for tomorrow? Tomorrow is the biggest misconception that most people got, get, and they misuse it, because I get it done tomorrow. Why can't you do it today? Think about it. Who has a business in here that wants to help people? Help people. Who has a business in here that wants to make a difference, a change, a difference in someone's life? Okay. I'm going to tell you guys. Here's the deal. When you, when you guys pass by bubblegum machines, leave a quarter for a kid like him. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Because you're, you are creating people like me and him. And how many of you walk in a grocery store and pass by a shopping cart? Everybody. You know, get out of the car, there's a shopping cart right there. Pass it right by. And you grab one in there and go get your groceries, right? I'm going to tell you why a lot of people fail in business. Because it's the little things that you remind your body to do. Just like getting up in the morning. See that normal thing that you do? Put yourself together, your hair, your nails, whatever. If you teach yourself little, little things, your business will thrive with no effort. Look at this. Check this out. Next time you go to a grocery store, if you see a shopping cart, it doesn't have to be next to you. Let's say if it's two car lengths from you, but you're going into the grocery store. Right? Why not just go get it? No, no, I'm just thinking about it. Why not just go get that shopping cart and push it in? Don't even grab another one. Use that as your groceries. But let's say if you don't, let's say if you don't, you need the shopping cart, put it in there. 
Guess what you have? You have, let's say him and I put shopping carts out at night because we got to get home because we need to study. And we know teachers not going to put up with us not having our homework right. But we got how many people in here? We got that many shopping carts left in the, you understand what I'm saying? So if you want someone to help you in your business, help them in theirs. You get what I'm saying? I'm saying, that little thing pushing that carpet cart in, I promise you, when you get ready to run it and leave out of the house, if there's something that you need to take care of, you'll take care of it real quick or make that bed. Making your bed up in the morning is crucial to your day. And you know, with kids, <laughs> it's, it's hard for people to make their beds up a lot of times. Is it hard for you to make your bed up? I don't do it. At all. At all. At all. Who else doesn't make their bed? Okay, I get that. I get that. Okay. Now, who makes their bed? Okay. That's why the world goes around. No, hold on. Uh, what I'm saying is, that's not a bad thing. Don't get me wrong. What I'm saying is, what you believe in is crucial. Because like, you have to have someone who can mow the lawn. You have to have someone who can wash windows. Have to have someone to be up here in speech. We all have different views. But right now, if you just saw her, you'd never know she makes her bed up. But now you know that when you see her in the morning, like you see her, did you make your bed this morning? Just tell, ask her, see if she said. <laughs> she might, you know, <laughs> after the third time, she might just make it just to piss you off. <laughs> but you know what I'm saying? I'm saying that little bit of thing changes you for who you are. But what it does is, is lets you know not to judge nobody. You know, don't judge nobody. Because you have no idea that she doesn't make her bed. She has no idea that. Where you love it, that you found the quarter of the bubblegum machine. Me and you, bubblegum guys. Me and you, we're the bubblegum team. You know? You have no idea that he loves old school cars. You don't know his passion. So that's why I say when you're out there, you're building a business, you want to create your own identity, like you brand yourself. You know? You want to brand who you are. Question. When you first started your business, how did you get customers? You know, what I did is. It was word of mouth because I was working for a company that was selling rental furniture. So every time we sold, went to one of the rental companies, I had a car with my name written on it. If you need something that's moved, you know, give me a car, you know. But I got in trouble for doing that, you know. So my biggest thing was is I started riding around the neighborhood. Every time I seen a for sale sign, I put a business card in there. You know what I mean? I'm going to tell you something else, though. This is... The f most free advertising you can ever get is the best advertising ever. One is word of mouth. Do a good job. People will tell everybody. But right now, let's say you old cars, right? I'm going to tell you right now how to get your business started off the ground, and you're going to say, are you kidding me? Every company that you know that works for own, own old cars, everybody who owns like a furniture store, because people who love nice furniture, they love old cars sometimes. You know what I mean? But what I'm saying, you go on their website. Let's say... Let's say it's um, a body shop. Walk into the body shop. Be authentic. Walk into the body shop and ask them, hey, you know, I'm looking to build old cars. I just want to kind of know what you guys do, you know? Leave out of there. Go home on your computer and the car and leave them a testimony online. It's free. I love old school cars. I love what you guys are doing. If you guys ever need any help as far as building or fixing something, I do engines. And I'll give every one of your customers 10%. You know what I'm saying? Think about how many customers. Everybody, who, everybody's online now, right? So anytime someone looks up that company, want to know what they do, guess what they see? You said, I'm going to give 10% to all your customers. You're giving them a plug. Go ahead. A lot of businesses, too, like especially with cars like that, they participate in network grouping for businesses. And so it's something like 10 bucks a month, and everybody advertises in everybody's business. Everybody does that. Everybody's got a little section set up inside that other business. See, there's another thing. I'm just telling you the lazy way. <laughs> <laughs> no, only reason I'm telling you the lazy way because most people are going to be lazy at times. We are going to have days we don't want to get up. But when you get those days and you don't want to leave, get the computer, leave three testimonies to some company and tell them that they're amazing. But go in there. That's why I say be authentic. Don't just make it up in your brain. Just walk in there. Go home. I love your place. Those people are going to love that you're on their website because you just said their place is amazing, right? So now, guess who gets all the business? Old school cars, old school love. You just built your dreams right there. 
tomorrow you can have 60 people looking at your name, want to know do you build businesses, and you haven't spent nothing but your time. Time is the best money you can ever spend. You know what I mean? Okay, I want you guys to write this down. The most important thing. What is, you gotta, I want you guys to answer this. You don't have to answer it tonight. What is the most, I said this in the beginning, what is the most important thing to you? It could be your mom, your dad, the new Jordans, you know. You know what I mean? That makeup from Bobby Brown at the counter, you know what I mean? That fades when you get mad, you know? All those things. Like, what is important to you? When you figure that out, life, from that very moment, you will get chills. When I figured out what was most important to me, you know what's, y'all want to know what's, what's important to me? That I make a difference. That I make a difference in somebody's life. You know? I mean, when I'm walking down the street, sometimes I see people and I'll reach out to them and ask them, what do they do for life? And they'll, sometimes they want to tell me, sometimes they don't. But nothing no one can ever take from you is your answer, asking a question. Even a genius asks questions. And in business, the one thing you want to take out of business, this is one other thing I want you to write down. One thing, the most important thing you want to take out of your business. Nobody should run a business emotionally. Like, if you're emotional about something, about you, whatever, because sometimes what emotional does is it makes you make a long-term decision on a short-term emotion. Because someone can come in there and not do well for you, and you can say, no, I'm not doing business with you no more because I don't. But you know what? You want to do business with that person. You know why? Because that person helps your likes come on. I move a lot of people that treat me like you have no idea. I'm talking about bad. But you know what? When I go home to my nice home, you know? I wouldn't say it's that nice. <laughs> but when I go home, I understand that that person that just told me to move that desk five times, my lights comes on. Thank you. You know what I mean? And you're not going to like everyone you do business with. That's the key. If you want to love everybody you don't want to do business with, you're not going to be in business long. <laughs> Because business, we all know business deals are business. Let's say, for instance, if you buy a pair of tennis shoes, what do you think the store paid for those tennis shoes? They had to be dishonest at some point. You know how you go to car dealerships and they're like, we're giving it to you at cost. <laughs> really? <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, are you serious? You're giving it to me at cost? Can any, anyone you th think you can run a business giving it at cost? Okay, so let me ask you something. Let's say, for instance, if you spent a dollar on a profit on something, and you made $2, is that 100% profit? No. It's not 100% profit. Let's say you spent a dollar and you made $5 on it. Is it 100% profit? Think about it. Is it 100% profit? Did you make good money on that deal? That's all, I'm just saying, these are questions that you're going to have to ask yourself when you start getting your business going about where your profit lies. Because I could spend $20 on something. Let's say I send my guys out to do a job. Let's say the job takes them two hours and they're making 10 bucks an hour. Let's say I made $200 on that job. Me personally, I have no clue what my profit is once I break down the truck, the gas, the time, factor in advertising, the clothes. You know what I mean? I mean, you know, I didn't make no profit. Zero. But if you keep understanding what zero is, you put the one, per one thing in front of it that means the master in you, that's when your money's going to start coming. So don't look at the ending result as much. You know what I mean? And you know how people say when you shake somebody's hand? Give me a shake hand. Look at me in the eye. You know what I mean? Sometimes I look at people and I, they're like, grab the purse or whatever. <laughs> like, dude, that's just too much for me, you know? There's no, like, there's no school that's going to tell you what's the best way to do business, what's the best way not to do business. The best way that I have found not to do business with anyone is you find what works for you. Don't look at the guy across the street. Because you can see five cars outside that can be, all can be the exact, but one has roll-up windows, one has power windows, one has a dual overhead exhaust. That was for you, you know? <laughs> 
and one could be all green. That was free, you know. But I'm just saying, you never know. That's why you don't judge. You don't ever prejudge someone walking into your business. Who wants to have a business that's a storefront? You want to have a storefront? You? Maybe? Okay. So, ma'am, back there with your kids at home. Okay. Where's your, where's your passion? What, what, what brings you here? Why are you here? No, but seriously, like, what, you're, you're in school. Like, why are you here? That's a look. I have a loaded answer for that because it first started out because my father always told me I was too stupid to fill in that blank. Okay. You're never going to amount to anything. You didn't go to school, on and on and on. And so originally I started, I'm going to show you how yeah. bad, how badly I am, how bad you think I am. I'm going to yeah. show you. I'll fail and I'll show you. Got through the first semester. Woo. Uh, I really can do this. Hmm. Have to rethink that. Is this really for him? No, it wasn't for him. It was for me to prove to myself that I can do this and that I'm better than I think I am. And that's when I finally realized through the four years we've been struggling <laughs> through this. Mm -hmm. And so, and I want to pass that on. My sons are no longer at home and seeing them progress into adulthood and the challenges that they have and the wonderful human beings that they're becoming is, I did something right, Dad. Look what I did. So. You see passion? You hear passion? Seriously, do you hear passion in her voice? I love that. You, I promise you, you're the reason why I held back tears many days. Because it reminds me of me. You're not here just for you. You're here for all the others. All those heartbeats and those steps that they're taking, they're not taking it for nothing. And for you to be an example to them, spending time here, look, these are kids. You understand? They're kids, but you're a kid. Just like me, me and you, we can go outside right now and play in the sandbox. I'll play with you for a long time. <laughs> you know? You know what I mean? Okay, all day long. I'll disappear quickly than you will. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> I'm just saying, <laughs> me and Mud, I promise you. But the thing about it is what I'm saying is, see when I say what your passion is? You got it, honey. That, what you said, is the key to your success. In the moment that you get to the point where you can't cry about it, that means you're doing everything about it. You understand what I'm saying? I'm saying crying is two different things. You can cry for sadness and cry for happiness. I'm talking about your tears be crying for happiness. These are happiness for me that I feel from you, which is amazing. Y'all got to give that up for that, lady. Come on now. That's, I'm just telling you. You know, Family, like on my shirt, I took this, I, see, with the shirt on, you can realize that, huh? <laughs> see, that's what I'm saying, now I'm going to hey, check this out, you know? I'm saying you never know what no one has. You know, like suit, yeah, it, does, it doesn't show. You put a suit on, you never know you built like this. Just build like a tank, you know what I mean? <laughs> you know, I thought about wrestling you, but I was nah, I'm not going to do that. Maybe off camera, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> no, but you just never know. That's what, you see her story, you never know that. So take this. When you start wanting to build your business, you want to build something, build you. Build you. And sometimes when a friend wants to go somewhere and you don't want to go because you've got things on your mind, write it down. If you're not good at writing, grab a tape recorder. Because what the tape recorder catches, it catches the rebirth of the innocence of truth within your voice. Because like when you, let's say if you say, want to write a letter to your girlfriend and say, I love you and I miss you so much. You got a girlfriend, right? Y'all girls, y'all know? Y'all. She's on a mission. Okay. Man, give me some. Shake your hand again. See, support that, man. She's faith. See that? Your faith. Wow, that gives me the chills. No, I'm just saying, that's, oh, are you kidding me? This girl's out there serving for, <laughs> you know what I mean? She's not serving out there just to build a, Building somewhere, she's building, what she's doing for herself is building inside, and she's changing lives. So you're all the above that I've talked about. And to support that, that's business. Same passion that you have for waiting for her, same passion you got to have waiting for someone when you start your business, for them to get what you're putting down that you want them to do. 
You understand what I'm saying? You have to have that passion. You have to have that passion. Okay, let me ask you something. How many down, when you tie your shoes, do you tie your shoes the exact same way? Every time. Do you think you tie your shoes the exact same way? What would you rather have, slip-ons or just tie-ups? Tie-ups. None. None. Okay. <laughs> okay. There's your answer. Okay, let's say you're doing a business, and you just ask everybody that you wanted them to go, all go outside and wash cars for today. There are going to be so many opinions. Just because that person has opinion is different than yours doesn't mean they're good for you. Scotty Pitt and Jordan, they did their thing. Y'all know, anybody know who Scotty Pitt and Jordan is? They did their thing, but they didn't get along that well. You understand what I'm saying? I have guys that work for me. I love my guys. But then sometimes I want to take my shoe off and throw it <laughs> at them. You know what I mean? I'm like, are you kidding me? But I'm just saying, but when they do good work, it's hard to teach someone it's your philosophy. So back to the tape recorder. Grab a tape recorder. If anyone you guys ever stopped by Radio Shack or Best Buy, get yourself a digital tape recorder. What that does is, even if you can't sleep at night, whatever thoughts you have, just say it. When you first hear your voice, you're going to be like, I sound weird. That's what I did. Because <laughs> I promise you, for the first, I say year, I did not like my voice. But when I started my business, five, well, let's say five years ago, my son went through brain cancer, a tumor this big, okay, size of a grapefruit. And um, that's why I say, I feel you, honey. And um, my brother was living with me. I went to Mississippi again. He was dealing with a, a disease called circoidosis. So he moved in. My mom got diagnosed in Mississippi for the, um, her diabetes was so bad they was wanting to amputate her legs. But I'm here to tell you, my mom, lives, I went and got her. I wanted a second opinion, a third opinion, a tenth opinion. Because all I hit needed to have some, one person tell me there's a possibility. One doctor told me there's a snowball chance. But I'm here to tell him there's fire burning, baby, because my mom is walking right now to this day. Still have her legs. My brother that lived with me passed away a couple years ago. But I had three years of understanding that my business supported our home, his insurance, all the above. And when I went to school, man, I was the, the teacher couldn't get me to sit down. <laughs> you know what I mean? But now that I'm up where I'm at now and I see the effects of the trinkle effects of what happens, because everything you do affects somebody at some point. So when he passed away, I learned now that to get a tape recorder, because there's a lot of things. Because I didn't know I knew how to write. My book came from writing sitting up at the Huntsman Center. Because I walk in there, and there's a family, and they're there every day with me. Then all of a sudden, I don't see that family anymore. That's because that little girl, a little boy, didn't make it. So that's what my book is called, Can You Imagine? Can You Imagine? So write Can You Imagine down. And this is a question to yourself. When you first do your, do your first act to you, towards your business, ask yourself that. You couldn't imagine this. You're not going to be able to imagine what you can accomplish. I mean, you've got to think about, we've got spaceships going at us, you know? Somebody is right now successful for painting a rock. I went to Florida, took one of those boats, and they pointed at somebody who came up with a bad rock. And their house is 10 times bigger than mine. I got all kinds of rock out by my house. I wanted to spray paint all of them when I came home. <laughs> you know what I mean? Just spray paint them. And then what I did is I went to one of those stores. Um, you know the ones that write believe and faith and all this stuff on the little rocks? I went down just laying rocks down just because I'm like, this is going to mean something to me. Because are you kidding me? A rock and he's successful? <laughs> you know what I mean? And then I pulled that down stuff and started looking the person up to learn more about his personality. Didn't have a personality. But guess what he had? Passion. If you believe it, somebody else will. If I told you guys there's a cloud in here, and you guys, there is a cloud. You look around. Look. <laughs> but you know there's not one, but you look, right? I'm just saying, your business, you want people to believe just as well as you believe. Anyway, let me, let's, let me end with this. 
Always remember love is love. Love is not the greater love. Like when you think what love is, love is not love. Love is what you do with it. Your action in what you do with it. You know those cliches when people say, I swim to the bottom of the ocean? Or I climb to the top of the mountain for you, baby? You know, all those things. Here's the deal. Or I love you from the bottom of my heart. In your business, I want you to have passion. I want you to do something different than anyone has done before. Because you're different. You're different. If you want to swim to the bottom of the ocean, I'm not talking about physically, but mentally, you want to swim to the bottom of the ocean, take a shovel so you can dig deeper. If you want to climb to the top of the mountain, take a ladder so you can reach higher. What I'm saying is take an extra step to get to where you're going, and I promise you, whatever you have, whatever you believe in, it's going to come to just like this. I never thought that I'd be in a room talking to kids like you because I thought maybe I'd be looking through bars because I didn't care about the world or anything else. But when I started caring, I would never give up. And I'm going to end with, just because you're sitting in this class with a bunch of people you don't know, these are some of your greatest people who you can do business with in the future. Thanks for having me today. I appreciate that. Okay.